Yo, what's good, original crew, man? We back. This is Patrick CC. We weren't able to do last week, but we got it this week for you. We got how the most hated man in comedy lost everything. Damn. Damn. I'm going to try to see what he lost, what he gained, and what he possibly lost. So, you ready? I'm ready. All right, let's check it out. But before we do, make sure you check out the links in the description box. It's down below. Go over there, check out the Patreon. Go check out Extra Dose. Go check out Facebook. We all over the place. Come on. I just got to make sure you hear what with, with us and the rest of the I'm crew. I'm here. I'm trying he's, to sit. He all right. Ain't nothing wrong with him. It, it looked like something's wrong. Ain't nothing wrong with Come that, on. man. Come on. But also, if you enjoyed today's video, man. Like it with a thumbs up, please. Golly. Golly. She needs some likes around it. <laughs> <laughs> like, man, let's go. Let's check it out. Let's see what it's about. You ready? I'm ready. All right. Dane Cook does not make me laugh at all in any way, shape, or form. How can any comedian get as famous as Dane Cook has with no jokes? He doesn't make me laugh, but that doesn't mean he's not funny. He doesn't get credit. He came up with a new genre sort of style of comedy. That guy is a total fucking trailblazer. This guy is a monster fucking talent that can kinda do anything. Dane Cook made his network television debut on Letterman in 1997. When I was little, my dream, all I wanted to do was take karate. I used to run around my house. <laughs> And I begged my dad, I was like, Dad, please, can I take karate? Come on. Nobody could have predicted that this guy would become the biggest comedian in the world just a few years later. The next day after that Letterman set, Dave noticed a shift in his performances. He trusted himself more, more movement, more emotion, whatever it took to get laughs. For me, it was tough growing up because I learned everything. From, I had five sisters, okay? I used to wear a tampon just to fit in, okay? Swear to God. <laughs> Here come Peter Cottontail. I uh, love sex. I always, you know what I mean? The thing is, it, it's just, mm. I'm crazy for it. I just, you know, I'm. One year later, Cook would appear on the new show, Premium Blend on Comedy Central, a stand-up comedy TV show that helped amplify numerous comedians in the late 90s, including Dave Chappelle, Gabriel Iglesias, and Amy Schumer. Then in 2000, Dane got a half-hour special on Comedy Central Presents. It seemed like he was on the right trajectory to becoming a mainstream success, but his career reached a standstill after that special. Some of you might think it's because he wasn't funny. He got enough exposure to a large audience through TV, and they decided they wouldn't be paying money to come see him live. Which could be true. However, comedy as a whole was in a rough spot. The late- That's one thing people do say about like, like when it comes down to comedy. You don't want to be too exposed, because then people are like, hey, I want to, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. You got to- yeah, you kind of got to tease your stuff, but have your good stuff for for the comedy show so you can tour. Feel like any other artist, you know yeah. what I'm saying? You got to, that's where you get bulk of your money from. But you don't, know, like, if they be like, hey, I could just sit at home and watch you on TV and get my laughs, then, I'm then they have no that. interest to go, go out. Yeah. 90s and 80s witnessed a comedy boom that the world hadn't seen before. George Carlin, Richard Pryor, Steve Martin, Eddie Murphy are just a few of the many icons who dominated that era. However, the 90s saw a huge downturn. Comedy clubs were closing all over the country, and the Comedy Central TV channel was yet to be established. Most successful comedians in the 90s usually got their notoriety through television sitcoms. Everybody Loves Raymond, Home Improvement, The Jamie Foxx Show, All American Girl, Drew Carey Show, the list goes on and on and on. These comedians would earn a fan base, then embark on a large stand-up tour for the audience that loves their TV show. Now obviously in the 90s you can't just produce your own show and upload it to TV, so comedians who didn't have Hollywood connections needed to grind for years. They would do short stand-up sets in comedy clubs all over the country and slowly build their reputation. Dane was willing to do that old school grind. He hoped at one of his open mics he would catch the attention of a talent manager with connections or a network looking to cast him in a massively popular TV show. But by 2003, he basically had nothing to show for besides being the intro for Smash Mouth's all-star music video. I am the waffler. With my griddle of justice, I bash the enemy in the head or I burn them like so. 
Dane had also just released his comedy album Harmful of Swallowed and had nobody to promote it to. It was time to take his career into his own hands, and this decision would launch him into superstardom. August 1st, 2003, a new social networking service called MySpace has launched, and after a few months of it being public, Dane decided he would give it a shot. He signed up and immediately started spamming clips and links to his short comedy sets, which were hosted on his website, danecook.com. Just like comedians today post 30 seconds to multiple minutes of a set on TikTok, Dane did the same thing on his website. Long before every social media was riddled with spam messages that link to identity theft criminals, people would actually engage with someone posting a link that says, check this out. Dane gained thousands of friends very quickly. On MySpace, they were called friends, but it's the same thing as followers. He began sending them messages. And I was like, yeah, this new thing, MySpace. I get on there, I take my 2,500 people, and one night I come home from the Laugh Factory, and I spend the whole night, I think I probably respond to 2,500 people. Like, welcome to the, uh, by their name. Hey, Carla in, where in Iowa? I saw it your birthday last week. Happy birthday. Mm. Here's a link, and I start sending people. I spend the whole night. I go home every night for four years. I shook every hand digitally with. That's smart. That's smart as fuck. I never even yeah, thought about yeah. some shit like that. You know what I'm saying? Those and then let's be real. Like 2,500 friends back on back in MySpace days yeah. was equivalent to t having like 250,000. You know what I'm saying? Back then, yeah. Like as far as Instagram or mm -hmm. or t like if you had 2,500, then yeah, 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 you were like. Popping, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? Like, I guess the most famous person I'll say when it came down to like MySpace age was Tila Tequila. Uh huh. Because I, I, I was, I used to be like, why is she so? Everybody was like, her MySpace is popping. Like, yeah. you see the amount of friends she had? I was like, shit, I'm trying to get up there with her. I think most I ever had on MySpace was like 5,000. I can't even remember. I had like 5,000 friends. I remember me and this chick, we was in school. Yeah. And she, I was like, why you send me a friend request? She was like, I'm trying to get you to be my friend. I'm trying to, I see what you're doing. I'm trying to get past you on, on friends. I said, bro, you'll never pass me. I know a lot of people. <laughs> like, I, I knew I knew people from all over the place. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And she was like, no, nah, I'm going to pass you. And then one one day I like skyrocket her like 500. She was like, damn, I ain't going to never catch you. I'm like, hell nah, nigga. What the fuck? <laughs> fan and sent links to pretty much every single person until I had millions of followers and could not do it anymore. Dane was doing the door-to-door -door sales equivalent of marketing his comedy online. One by one, he created a digital empire on a site that was being grossly Damn. underestimated by the entertainment industry. On top of MySpace, Dane also saw the value in putting audio versions of his comedy on sites like Napster and even LimeWire. Little by little over the next year, fans purchased or, more likely, illegally downloaded his Harmful of Swallow CD, which contained iconic bits like the BK Lounge, Monopoly, Not So Kool Aid, and Tire in the Face. This material is considered by fans to be his best still to this day, and many others still have no idea why people thought it was funny. Dane's humor was very much built around young adults, and since college kids were the vast majority of people using the internet, he was in the right place. He quickly started selling out 2,000 to 2,500 seat venues, primarily at colleges in the US. He created a hand sign slash logo as a symbol for his fans, reminiscent of Jay-Z's rock. This was dubbed the Superfinger or Sufi. According to Dane, this is when your middle finger alone does not convey the intensity of your emotion. He got a little bit of mainstream attention too, if you count being the sausage mascot in Mr. 3000. Hey, oh, yeah. hey buddy, buddy, come here. Help me out, please. Zipper. Hey, can you give me a hand? By 2005, MySpace was the most popular social media site in the world, and Dane was the most popular comedian on the site. He had momentum, and he was on the cusp of something big. He set up a 20-date tour and hired a production team to film it, so he would have more content for his social media pages. Torgasm was initially a webisode that ended up getting purchased by HBO and turned into a legitimate TV show. During Torgasm was when Dane realized just how powerful the internet was. He booked a show at Penn State expecting 3,000 fans, but had to get moved to the Bryce Jordan Center because they sold 12,000 tickets. The material he was practicing on this tour was his second comedy album and special, Retaliation. Despite his huge internet following and multiple sold out shows, Dane wasn't respected in the comedy world. A week before I released my second album, Retaliation, a week before, we couldn't get one publication to write about it. Spin, Rolling Stone, like anybody, nobody. All he had was his MySpace fans, and because of them, Dane Cook was about to make history. 
July 26, 2005, Dane officially released his comedy CD album, Retaliation, with Comedy Central Records. Two weeks later, he was number four on the Billboard Hot 200, directly under Now 19, Young Jeezy, and Mariah Carey. It was the most successful comedy album debut since Steve Martin's A Wild and Crazy Guy in 1978, 27 years earlier. The album went two times platinum and remained the number one Billboard comedy album for 49 weeks. Retaliation contained two discs of raunchy college humor bits like Bamf, The Friend That Nobody Likes, where he's credited for creating the term Karen that is wildly popular today. Karen is always a douchebag. Every group has a Karen, and she's always a bag of douche. Have you ever seen him before? Yeah. No, I'm saying like, because his face, I can't remember. I'm like, I'm looking, I'm like, because I've seen him before, but I can't place it. Because when they were short, like the, like earlier, earlier, I was like, when he was like just a little slimmer, yeah. I couldn't place, I was like. I could place I'm, his face, but I can't place yeah. it exactly where I've seen it at. Yeah, I was like, I know him. But I don't know where I know him from. Yeah, yeah, you know he's what one I'm of saying? them people. Like I know the face. I'm like I know his face, and I watched him on something, or he's been on something that I watched or came across. Yeah. But I can't place it. Yes. When she's not around, you just look at each other. And go, God, Karen, she's such a douchebag. <laughs> Until she walks up and then you're like, hey, what's up, Karen? Other fan favorites like Struck by a Vehicle and The Creepy Guy at Work. Immediately after this album boomed, he started getting recognized by the entertainment industry. His first gig, a two-minute set at the MTV VMAs where he absolutely bombed. We like a little violence in this country. And I know you're like me, you can't deny it. Sometimes when you see somebody walking down the street wearing a Superman t-shirt, you just want to shoot them in the chest. And when they start to bleed, go, I guess not. He appeared on Jay Leno's late night show where he did this. First of all, thank you. But before that, I just want to let you know that I am a, I'm, I'm, I'm a massive fan oh my God. of yours. Thank and you. uh, I mean, you're beautiful. You're, you're a talented monster and uh, North Country. And just, uh, wow. I mean, I know I'm kissing your ass here, but. Uh... <laughs> then on the Jimmy Kimmel show where he was an absolute madman. Look. <laughs> She's exceptional, okay? Really she's exceptional, she's exquisite, she's, uh -huh. she's so many words in my vernacular. And, uh, and uh, yes, Tom is making a play for uh, oh. KH. I'll be home soon, Katie. <laughs> <laughs> he got to host SNL in December 2005 and then a second time in 2006. He hosted the Teen Choice Awards in 2006 because he was every teen's favorite comic. Dane also starred in a new film alongside Jessica Simpson called Impl Damn, that's, that's, that's I was why. like, I've seen him. I've watched something he's in. That's why. That's I've seen this fucking movie too many yeah, times. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Definitely seen his face in that. Yeah, and I feel I've like I've seen it before, but that's not his face. I, I was like, I want to look it up so bad. I have seen the I play in a month. I wanted to, too. But I was like, I'm I just going to wait. I have seen this movie a lot, though. Yeah, I was like, I'm just going to wait because I, I know, know it's going to come yeah, up. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. Damn, that's crazy. ...of the month, which is honestly a pretty solid movie. Easily his best role. From there, he had Good Luck Chuck and My Best Friend's Girl. His stand-up exploded to heights that people didn't think were possible. Cure Insurance Arena, Meadowlands Arena, Michelob Ultra Arena, Allstate Arena. Dane Cook was selling out 5,000 to 12,000 person venues every week, which peaked when he got the opportunity to perform at the legendary Madison Square Garden. The only problem was, he didn't have any material prepared because he was so busy doing movies. But you can't turn down MSG. Dane had no choice. The promoter apparently had a $150,000 budget to promote the show, but they didn't have to spend a dime because of Dane's social media following. As soon as the tickets went live, he posted the link on MySpace. Sold out. So they added a second show the same day. Sold that one out. Dane Cook became the second comedian in history to sell out the garden two nights in a row. The first being Andrew Dice Clay, who was ironically like the Dane Cook of the 90s. Dane hired a small camera crew to film, thinking it was either going to be his best or worst performance in history. He improvised half of the material, rambling, screaming, sound effects, his usual shtick, and he absolutely crushed it. This off-the-cuff performance was released later as his Rough Around the Edges special. Dane was zooming past veteran comics. The industry had never seen someone go from a hack at the funny farm to a stadium icon in this short period of time. He simply could not take an L, which is when the hate started rolling in. Rolling Stone published an- That's how it always is, bro. <laughs> like, 
you know what I'm saying? The, the ones who do some of the hardest work building up, like, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Just enjoying their journey mm-hmm. and their rise, and then they get to the top. And just because you don't sell out and do what other people do, that's when all that And then especially hate. when you feel like, say, for instance, you more of a veteran in the game mm-hmm. or whatever the case may be. Like, how this young blood done came up and ain't surpassed us? Or, did, like or kiss or, my ass to yeah, get to the top. Because I had to kiss her ass, too. Yeah. So, I mean... The joke's on us. How can any comedian get as famous as Dane Cook has with no jokes? Jim Brewer, a stand-up veteran who hosts a radio show that often interviews comedians, said, Not one comedian comes on my show and says, I'm so happy for him. Which is weird. They can't stand this poor guy. Steven Rosenfield, director of the American Comedy Institute, says Dane is kind of like Perrier water. It's brilliantly bottled, but it's still seltzer. By the way, drink water. Every other day, there was a journalist writing about how much they hated Dane Cook. Family Guy took shots at him. Mad TV had a parody skit about him. He became a punching bag in the entertainment world. Now, it's pretty easy to say that people were just jealous of Dane's success, and that could be true. Like, a lot of jealousy, a lot of animosity that I, at a young age, was famous, hanging around with beautiful women, rich. Even Joe Rogan has said the same. I remember when Dane Cook was killing it. There were so many haters. And not just because of all the real reasons to be a hater, but also just because of his success was so astronomical. I remember people would just fume thinking about Dane Cook selling out arenas. But it's pretty easy to see major flaws in Dane's comedy. His humor heavily relies on delivery rather than genuinely witty content. Many of his jokes revolve around relatable, everyday experiences such as playing Monopoly and having friends and eating at a fast food restaurant. He exhibits this, you know what I mean, type humor, or simply relatable humor, which is amplified by his sound effects, screaming, and insane body contortions. Now. But ain't that some of the best comedy, though? Like, shit that people feel like they understand. Yeah. Like, I like relatable that's content. That's relatable. Or that you just bring whatever you're talking about to life. You know what I'm saying? Or um, I'll say this. Is there a possibility? Because everybody's not going to relate to everybody. And that's true. And that's the reason why, I like... And then I'll also say this. Every, uh, all comedy ain't for everybody. It's not. You know what I'm saying? You're going to come across a comedian. You're going to be like, hey, I just don't find it funny. That doesn't mean that com- comedian is bad at what he does. It's just you're not his target audience. You know what yeah. I'm saying? And it seems like he knew his tar- target audience. Well, and he was able to capitalize, yeah. on, especially on the internet age at an early time. Yep. And like I said, I always hear like, you got you got different comedians nowadays. You mm-hmm. got you got your Cat Williams. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying. You got your Mike Epps. You know what I'm saying. You got your Kevin Hart. You got your Dave Chappelle. All different types of styles yeah, of comedy. Definitely. Every everyone got their own lane. Everyone draws their own attention. Do that mean some people will say, "Hey, this comedian suck. That comedian suck." Yeah. They're just not for you. They yeah. all have their each their different own styles of comedy. Right. And it seems like that's what he did. But he was smart enough to realize. His tar- target audience, he utilized social media way before anybody else. Because a lot of people didn't think, they thought MySpace. They didn't see everything else was going on. Right. Like, I remember when first, Facebook first came around, people mm. was like, damn, Facebook? I wish MySpace didn't kind of fold to Facebook. Yeah. Instead of still continuing. Because right now, you see, we, we're all on multiple social media platforms. Yeah. So, I don't know. Like, it's just weird hate, man. His sound effects are damn good, and he's a very good storyteller. But often his stories lead nowhere, falling flat and ending with something like... You're the person nobody likes. I know, it is so true, and that's why it's funny. It is so true. That's why it's funny. Because it's so true, hence funny. Unlike typical comedians who display brokenness or cynicism, Cook maintains a positive, unassuming lifestyle where dudes think he's the man and girls think he is a heartthrob. But just because he prioritizes showmanship doesn't make him unfunny. Dane didn't even address the hate. At first, he actually liked it. He felt like a comedy supervillain. Plus, he was doing arena after arena filled with tens of thousands of people laughing. He could care less what one journalist or one open mic comic thought. There is one very clear objective to comedy, to make people laugh. Dane was getting laughs and making millions. He was winning. But the reason many people hated him wasn't just because of his good looks and success. He was labeled a joke thief, and stealing jokes is a career-ending sin in comedy. Uh 
Dane's 2005 Retaliation album contained a few jokes that were very similar to Louis C.K.'s 2001 album Live from Houston, Texas. The first accusation of plagiarism comes from a bit they both did when choosing a weird name for their child. I'd like to have a kid, because you can name your kid anything you want. I like that part. I'd like to give my kid an interesting name, you know? Like a name with no vowels, maybe, you know? Just like... Just like 40 Fs, that's his name. Then Dane's bit four years later. I already have names picked out, I don't even know. First kid, boy, girl, I don't care. The first one that comes out, I'm naming it. I think it's beautiful. It's feminine but strong at the same time. Time for bed. I said time for bed. The iconic Steve Martin had a joke in the 1970s where he discusses parents naming their kids. Some people think they were both inspired by the same joke. However, the second accusation was the itchy butthole bit. Like I was staying in a hotel and the soap was really nasty and I had an itchy asshole for like a week and I could have won a million dollars. I still would have been going, fuck my asshole! It itches! I don't know if you've ever gotten this. About, uh, it was about 2.30 in the afternoon. I got the itchiest asshole I've ever gotten on record. And I keep a record of my itchy assholes. May 14th, 1985, I had a very itchy asshole. This one ousted it. Get out of here! The third accusation was regarding a bit where Louie and Dane witness someone about to be hit by a car, and they don't know what to say to prevent it. Because it was happening really fast. I had like that much time to yell, you know, what can I yell in that much time? That's, hey, you got to my god! You know, that's not. She's going to open the door, gosh! As the car was coming towards him, I reached out and I said, oh, oh, that's all I could think of to say. All three jokes are delivered differently. Yeah, they are delivered differently. And I was thinking that in my head, I'm like, the delivery is different, but I do But the understand. subject matter. Yeah, I Especially when, them. when it comes, no, my bad, go. No, you're good. No, no, go, go, go. No, I was just going to say that if it is like, you know, you're inspired by, you know, or you look like, cause he is, I don't know, like when, like the time, like the gap in between, like as far as like how long Lewis had been doing it but before. The, but the thing, that's the thing. The joke was told in 2001. Yeah. He, on, on Lewis' uh, on CD. Lewis yeah. So it was released in 2001. You released yours in 2005. In 2000, so that's what, that's yeah. just four years, four in, years between. in between. And there's somebody is of that time, your peer. Right. So, is it Joe stealing? It looks heavily like it's Joe stealing. Yeah. It ain't inspiration because the inspiration would be Steve Martin because he came before you, way before you. Mm -hmm. But somebody who just put out the similar, same joke, very much similar, four years earlier, yeah, that ain't mean. looking yeah, up to him. Because that is somebody of your peer. Because that was his yeah. second album. Yeah. One of his first one. Yeah. But so, yeah, I, I guess you can call it. Yeah, I guess it'll be that. The delivery is different, but yeah, it will be that most definitely. The meaning behind it, everything else is is very much the same though. Yeah. But it's an extreme coincidence that Dane's 2005 album has three bits that cover the exact same premises as Louis's 2001 album. Louis didn't actually blame Dane though, and in a weird turn of events, Louis invited Dane onto his television show to do a scripted scene where he confronts him. Some of my jokes. I, I, I think you saw me do them, I know you saw me do them, and I think they just went in your brain, and I don't think you meant to do it, but I don't think you stopped yourself either. CK thinks Dane had a case of cryptonesia which is basically when you think you had an original thought or idea, but you heard it somewhere else and totally forgot. Despite Louis giving Dane a pass, comedy fans still hated him. But the joke theft didn't stop there. Dane but that can't happen, though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, that happened with a lot of people. A lot of people like, no, nah, no, nah, I came up with that bar. Then they, somebody like, no, nah, no, nah, literally somebody. They be like, damn, I must have heard it. And then and remember, you, I, yeah. And, and that's the reason why so much, especially in the entertainment business now, we get so much recycled content from music to uh, comedy to movies. And it's because so many people are forgetting that they've seen something already. Yeah. And they thinking it's, it's a traditionally their own thought. And it's not. And it's not, yeah. 
Louis giving Dane a pass, comedy fans still hated him. But the joke theft didn't stop there. Dane had a joke about a shoe store in 2007 that was almost exactly the same as Dimitri Martin's in 2006, where they both talk about asking for a shoe size and the worker comes back with the wrong size, resulting in them having to cut off a piece of their foot. I went into a shoe store and I said, uh, hey, can I get those in a 10? The guy said, sure, and he went in the back. Then a couple minutes later he came out and he goes, I don't have a 10, I have a 9. <laughs> Great. Because while you were in the back, my toes were severed off. She walks out. She comes up to me, you guys, so enthusiastic, such like optimism. She's holding a boot. She comes right up to me and she goes, um, we have it in a 9. <laughs> Great, you guys also have a bone saw anywhere nearby? Joe Rogan even says Dane stole one of his bits about tigers f***ing, but Dane changed it from tigers to rhinos. Rogan took matters into his own hands and confronted Dane with a phone call, seeking an explanation. Dane apologized to Joe and said he would axe the bit. Just two weeks later, Joe caught Dane telling yet another bit of his on stage once again. Joe confronted Dane in person this time, saying, What the f*** are you doing? You know that's my bit. You heard me say it. What the f*** makes you think you can take my material and do it on stage? Despite- So do you consider him a joke thief now? You no, know I'm right? saying earlier you said oh, it could be. We both said it could be, but now with way more evidence, you're literally telling the same joke, just changing a word. Because I've, I've, I that's one thing I've seen, and still, especially in the comedy world, uh, people have came out and said people steal jokes, so they have other people write jokes, and it has recently came out a lot more now that some of the most famous and popular comedians have other have a team of comedians that writing jokes and I've heard them do this too, right? They'll go and have somebody from their team that's not really famous and known and go sit and watch somebody else shit. And steal their jokes, bring it or back. Or not even steal it, but see what they working with. And see what you can you can get from that. Not necessarily necessarily steal the joke. But okay, well, still taking because either way it go, if you go and see what you can t get from it, and then bring it back to the drawing board and be like, "Hey, here, that's still taking this person." So, so do you feel as though those those type of comedians should be put up on that pedestal because it's it's not your original work. Like you're not really like really can come up with jokes. Yeah. Because it, it like when I say coming up with jokes is hard. And being a comedian is, is really tough. Mm -hmm. It's it's hard. So what, I'm asking you, would you consider like those be good comedians? The ones that take and steal from others. Yeah. Not necessarily. Or have people write for them. The the only reason I'm trying to tread lightly with that is because <laughs> I don't know who all. <laughs> I don't know who you don't. Um, you don't have to, to, to. But this is the thing, though. Just because somebody may write for you, you still got to go out and deliver it. Like, uh, okay. Personally, I would want you to come up with your own shit. Make it more raw and authentic. Yeah. That's just what I personally would like. You know what I'm saying? But you do have the ones that do write for you. But teach us on. Numerous accusations and kind of a lot of proof. A lot of people still think these were just coincidences. And Dane is not actually a joke thief. But Dane got something stolen from him. Money. Millions of dollars stolen by his own brother. Daryl McCauley was Dane's older half-brother on his mom's side, and while growing up, Dane considered him his first real best friend in his life. As Dane began to make money in comedy, he asked Daryl to quit his job as a corrections officer and manage his finances. For many years, Dane worked extra hard to not only earn money for himself, but also for his brother's career opportunity. McCauley made an estimated $12,500 a month for his role. However, Dane was forced to replace McCauley as his business manager for tax purposes after relocating to Los Angeles. Despite Cook offering to keep him in the company under a different position, Macaulay was still angry. Although he had suspicions, Dane claims that he just woke up one morning and had an epiphany. And then Monday I woke up and I literally sat up in my bed, turned to my girlfriend, woke her up, and I go, I think my brother stole all my money. Dane knew he had to pursue legal action, but a piece of him still had love for his brother, which showed in his testimony. He shared with the judge in Massachusetts that Cook believes Daryl could have mental issues stemming from his connection to his birth father, who had his own mental disorders. Cook believes it could be genetic and that Daryl felt entitled to the money. Typically, people who are deemed mentally unstable can get a reduced level of punishment. Macaulay pleaded guilty to larceny, embezzlement, and forgery charges. He was ordered to serve five years in prison. His wife was sentenced to two and a half years for 
for her involvement in the scheme, and the court ordered Macaulay to repay Cook $12 million. What? Keep in mind, 12 million. Oh, hell no. Not fucking. Tw That's a lot of fucking money. You and your wife? And I'll say this. This is one thing I see a lot of people fuck up at. Instead of wanting to hire people that are experienced and know the business, mm -hmm. y'all be like, I can, uh, not y'all, some some people, not everybody yeah. do it. But they'll be like, oh, I can just hire somebody in my family who can do it. They, they good with money management, so they can be my business finance person. They don't have the experience. He was a correctional officer. But regardless of the fact, anybody can steal your money. Yeah, you yeah. can hire somebody. And they no, can no, no. Money. I'm and just if saying. They more professional. They can do it in a way where you won't even. What I'm saying is. I get what you're saying. Also, quit just looking to put your put your family on. I yeah, understand. Yeah, yeah, most definitely, most definitely. I feel you. Or you because, can find a way. Because you had you had your you had your brother best interest in your heart mm -hmm. this whole time. They ain't give two fuss about you. And yeah. it, I say this because I was like thinking about. I was like. Even though y'all have brothers, y'all brought up on is y'all by the same mom. So mm -hmm. nine times out of ten, y'all yeah. brought up under the same roof. Yeah. Nine times out of ten, it could be that one off, but nine times out of ten, y'all brought up on the, and taught the same lessons and got got it the same way because you know what I'm saying by by your mom. Yeah. So a lot of shit, y'all, uh, it's kind of excuses. You know what I'm saying? Why a big grown thirty some year old man? Is, has stolen. Well, technically, yeah, more than likely was an excuse, but it's because of the, and your of wife. the simple fact that you love your brother. Like, you're still my brother. I and just your, hate that he did this, and I have to do what I have to do and your as wife much was, as it may hurt. And your wife was in on it, too, so she didn't give a fuck either, because she could have been like, don't do your brother like that. She, she eats she, good, too. Yeah. She like, do what you do for that's a, that's a lot, bro. That's a lot of money ordered to serve five years in prison. His wife was sentenced to two and a half years for her involvement in the scheme, and the court ordered Macaulay to repay Cook $12 million. Keep in mind, $12 million is just what they could prove he stole. It's likely that there was a lot more money stolen. From that moment on, the relationship between the two previously close brothers was shattered. He hasn't spoken to him since. Adding to that pain, both of Cook's parents sadly passed away in 2006 and 2007, leaving Dane in emotional turmoil which ultimately led to his downfall. The faster you rise, the harder you fall. Eventually, Dane ran out of steam. His last CD album was called Isolated Incident in 2009, which featured a much smaller, more intimate setting of 400 people and was filmed in one take. It performed well amongst his fans, but at this point, Dane's shtick had been rinsed. Comedy is a slow grind. You need years to develop material, and by the early 2010s, his audience had outgrown his humor. He had a little string of controversial jokes that got him backlash on the internet, like this one at the Teen Choice Awards where Dane pokes fun at Vanessa Hudgens' leaked photos. Where's Vanessa Hudgens? Girl, you got to keep your clothes on! And another joke where he made light of the very serious 2012 movie theater shooting in Aurora, Colorado. I'm pretty sure that somebody in that theater about 25 minutes in realizing it was a piece of crap probably was like, oh, fucking shoot me. <laughs> Despite the crowd thinking it was funny, the internet did not which started a long history of comedians getting their sets leaked and criticized on the internet. Dane had trouble maintaining his appeal to the youth, and his bad plastic surgery wasn't helping. The hate and resentment from the comedy community finally started to hit him, and he took a step back from the spotlight. Let me ask you this one question, too. I'm sorry, sorry, y'all. Sorry, sorry. Sorry, everybody. Shut up. Uh, <laughs> as a comedian, mm -hmm. I do feel like you can't just jump in and like at your thirties and say you want to be a comedian, right? Yeah. Um, uh, I do feel like you. It is a grind. It's a grind and a work yeah, up. Yeah, yeah. But as you get older, don't you? When you think your act should also get older, like yeah. your subject matter, what you talk as about. You, yeah, as you get older and growing and yeah, learning yeah, yeah. and experiencing new things, that needs to be yeah. It needs yeah. to reflect. Yeah. Your life at that moment. From what I've seen, a lot of his shit will stay immature. Yeah. And as his audience mature, his jokes stay immature. From what we've seen from here. Just, yeah, just from that. And some people do kind of get stuck because, like, it grew so fast. He, he kind of, well. I didn't want to touch on that to him, but no, you go. 
<laughs> you can go. We can touch on it Because he, he did grow fast, though. We can, but. we can touch on it later. <laughs> Enough money to just chill and live a pretty relaxed lifestyle on his own terms. He still did large shows, theaters, casinos throughout the 2010s, a tour in 2013 and in 2019, but these days he mostly just spends time with his wife Kelsey Taylor, who is 26 years younger than him. A creator by the name of Tracy Morrissey speculated oh, some shit. foul play. Dave and Kelsey made their relationship official in 2017 when Kelsey was about 18 and a half years old. Dane oh, says that he shit. met his girlfriend at a game night he hosts at his house. How do you meet a 23 year old? How do you meet? Where do you meet? I used to uh, host every Friday night for two years. I had a uh, like a code names or running charades game night at my house. And then I just ended up meeting her through hosting game nights. So how long have you been going out? Going, going out? Yeah. Oh, no, we've been together five years. So now we're engaged after being together five so years. 18. Huh? That's right. She, wow. Yeah. How, that, wow. Yeah. <laughs> it's legal. This 2016 photo shows a large mix of people at one of his game nights. These don't look like celebrities. You have people in the comment section asking if they can be invited. And when you consider how Dane back in his MySpace days was very comfortable reaching out to people one by one, maybe he just invited his fans to his house. This photo in 2016 shows Kelsey at a game night a few weeks before she was 18. Dane was 45. Tracy went on a deep dive and discovered multiple instances of young girls at Dane's game nights. Actress Joey King, who was 16. Emily Lind was 14 in this photo. Emily Robinson, 18. Saxon Charbino was 16. He even posted a photo with the 15 year old saying, I saw a screening with my home girl. The common denominator is that all of these girls would go on to be actresses or aspire to be in the entertainment industry. This obviously had people accusing Dane of grooming young women and ultimately his wife. Dane hasn't addressed these allegations directly, but he is aware of the backlash. Yeah, yeah. But people give you hell I, for that. What oh, you sometimes. Say? Oh, you're talking about the internet. That's a whole nother league. Yeah, yeah. That's so, where you live, the internet and your lawn. In real life, nobody's ever had any kind of uh, anything but like giving us flowers and being very lovely. He even jokes about it in his new stand-up. Yeah, because I'm 49, my girlfriend's 23. She was doing her homework and I said to her, <laughs> I said, bedtime soon, Betty, let's talk before bed, bed. Over the years, Dane has regained his reputation. And that's back to that, that immaturity and your jokes, your jokes. Touch on it later. No, I was, I was, I was just, I, it was a joke. Comedy. Not saying people are admitting that he was actually funny the whole time, but they do believe they were too harsh on him or maybe hated him out of jealousy, or maybe just hated him to jump on the bandwagon. He was a massive innovator with social media. Listening back to these jokes was nostalgic. Maybe they didn't age all that well, but one thing for sure is Dane was a huge reason why a lot of young people got interested in comedy. Me especially. I don't think I would care nearly as much about stand-up as I do today if it wasn't for Dane. Remember, use the link in my description to start playing What? Now I'm just trying to think about like I was inspired by. Everybody gonna be inspired by somebody. No, 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 just, just, I, no I, that's why I ain't, I ain't saying that. <laughs> but um, yeah, I don't know, child. Uh, that kind of threw me off a little bit. Oh, uh, but go back <laughs> to your point of going up fast and. Um. Uh, mm. Cause we, cause we always talk about you know what I'm saying the course of your journey should always be a steady climb. You're gonna have peaks. You're gonna have valleys. But it should still be a steady climb. Mm -hmm. If it's if it's you just skyrocketing up, mm -hmm. nine times out of ten you're gonna skyrocket down. It's yeah. never like your course is only as smooth as the ride. So mm -hmm. if the ride is boom, normally the ride is boom. Yeah. But if the ride is, it's gonna always be. You're gonna get those people. Who, people always come and go, but it's typically you gonna. You know what I'm saying? So. Yeah. I never pet like I hate when people always oh you like come on now like everybody's journey is different but yeah, I honestly don't remember what I was gonna say earlier but that last bit yeah that's that, a that last bit I just don't understand like even with that I understand it was whatever whenever but stuff like that still happens now but I just can't like. I don't understand why people don't see things that's wrong. Like, shouldn't no one, no one under age should even be, but you know what you they know, gonna going say? to, like... Somebody somebody watching this video or watch Patrick's video already yeah. or going to be in the comments going to say, 
It's but she's eighteen. It's legal. Yeah, yeah, because y'all looking at the right now. But what about the before? And obviously, she, it I want to get stuck over on her that because before she was. I don't want to get stuck on that, but she shouldn't even been in the in the in the home. Yeah, no minors. And she's not even the only one that you know was even from even when it comes to even males and stuff. Like I understand, like, but if you're not like a, a relative, you just like some type of somebody I look up to on the internet or out it, you know, like you my should child not, be not going to, to yeah. know. Like, what? But you got to see these circles, bro. Like, this shit happened in Hollywood a lot. A lot of the times, yeah. they, they invite these underage, I want to be a model. I want to be an yeah. actor. I want to be an artist. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. And it is low-key be grooming mm -hmm. because y'all start flirting with them. But they always oh, just harmless. This is what the industry does. Yeah. And then they always over there. You know, y'all pass him a little. I'm not saying this is what he did. I'm not saying it. But I'm just saying this is the type of stuff that actually happens in the industry. And then years later, we hear these people crying and talking about it while we just looking like, damn. Like, we, like, come on now. We all got eyes to see shit. But until they want to come out later on and say some shit, then that's when we be like, damn, bro. Like, what? You know? No, I don't know. I'm, I'm saying like, what you're saying. I'm saying we'll we'll be seeing people connected with people, and then we'll be like the age thing, or we'll hear rumors, and we'll be like, well, if they want to say something, they'll come out and say something. But a lot of them be afraid to say something. Then, say say for instance, twenty thirty years from now, they all oh, I was inappropriately, and then people look at them a certain way, like, well, you should came out and said some way back then, and still, you know. Yeah, basically. Uh, Not believing. Yeah. When y'all y'all can clearly see something might be wrong right here, you know. Yeah, and but then, everyone turns a you know turns a blind eye like. And Howie is his peer. You would think you know what I'm saying your peer. And his and Howie was trying to kind of slick say something, but the female she was, but she's legal. Like Howie is his is his peer. Mm -hmm. Howie is a a, a comedian. Came up around that same time, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And how he like, hey, bro, like, grown man, grown man, you know that kind of looks a certain way. Yeah. But he wants to do it in his own way. Mm -hmm. But, you know, like, his whole... What? It's a lot, though. This whole story behind it, it's a lot. Yeah, it's a lot. From it's... the money stealing, the comedies, the jokes stealing. Yeah. Uh... And I'll say this, to be completely honest, I didn't really, like, besides the one movie I saw, Employee mm -hmm. of the Month, which was, it kind of like, you know what I'm saying, feel like a low-budget good film. Mm -hmm. You know those low-budget good films, you'd be like, oh, yeah. they want a box office film. But outside of that, I really n never looked at him as, like, a strong comedian like that. You get what I'm saying? Yeah, I guess honestly, I really don't be knowing people for real like that. Like I don't really know names like that. I know faces, and that's why I was like, he looks familiar, but I don't know where I know him from. Yeah. But again, he's not someone that I'm checking for. You know, yeah, even yeah. then, back then, like he wasn't someone that I was checking for per se. But I did know that I recognized his face face from somewhere, and I did see that movie, and I seen the third movie that he had yeah, mentioned, yeah, I can't remember the name, but I one. seen that one too, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but I didn't really correlate that he was like a stand-up comedian. I thought he was just an actor. Yeah, like I didn't yeah. know he was like a stand-up comedian, like yeah. I just didn't know, because I've never seen anything really from him, Yeah, like personally, but again, yeah, it's yeah, not yeah, someone yeah. that... Are you and I did. I have it? seen him. Um, I feel like back in the day, hosting like the um, yeah, yeah, the yeah, like the war shows. It, the yeah, like those. I feel like I do remember him from back in the day, like doing that. But other than that, I don't really. I didn't come know up more like did. a cameo uh face, like somebody you stick here. Yeah. You know, they can do some little punchline jokes in here. They, yeah, like, you know. But the only thing I. I I can't remember exactly what I was going to say earlier, but honestly, like, I feel like the faster you grow, um, and you just, like, skyrocket, like, it's just kind of like, it necessarily doesn't happen overnight, but it feels like, because everything yes. is coming so fast, More quicker, like, yeah, pace. Yeah, yeah, and it seems like a lot of things just crumble, like, super fast, because you haven't even really, I feel like a lot of people don't really go through each experience or, or no. 
I can't, I can't really explain it, but I feel like when things happen so fast, you don't even have time to grasp what's happening or learn, or, like, learn, learn, or learn like really experience like certain, yeah, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, and it's yeah, just yeah. kind of like things just crumble and it could be gone just like that or whatever case. And because but I don't you know. didn't go through those experiences, so you don't even know how to, like on the bottom to be able to work it out. You know? Yeah, but I don't know like his situation like now, yeah. like he can be good and on a, I don't know. I just like, think, like, really with the material, well, his material ain't going to age, really, because he's entertaining younger people. And then, after seeing, you know what I'm saying, now I understand that Vanessa Hudgens, like, because she was way, way young, mm-hmm. and now I can get, I get why you felt like that was a good joke, because, you know, yeah, like, and then it still, the jokes kind of just seems very immature. Yeah. You know, because you, you, like, it's, like say for instance, like a comedian like Kevin Hart, mm-hmm. as he gets older, his jokes uh, get older. He starts talking about more of his marriage and his, fa- and family. his family, and, and just his, like everyday yeah. situations. Even Dave Chappelle, it's more more mature. It's like my I'm, my son, he met Kevin Hart for the first time, yeah. and it's just more mature. So it's more as your audience grow, you gotta grow with them. Mm-hmm. But his, it seems like his is still very like that that immature like. No, like yeah. I'm Have just a, saying for me, that immature corny ass shit. He's just like, bro, like grow the fuck up. Yeah. For lack of terms for just for, for me. I to guess be able for some people it. it can be like, you know, cheesy. Because you know when you young, you find kinda everything kinda just But yeah, forties, I'm like, bro, grow the fuck up. That's some yeah, I'm not talking about we now. might I'm say in our twenties, mm-hmm. but in your forties, like Yeah. You saying to you tell your 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 fiance to yeah. Time to go to bed. That kind of sounds a little, you know, pervertish to me. Yeah. Because you 20. Oh, shit. He twice our age. I just put two and two together. Child, we, we, we passed that. We done, <laughs> we done all figured that out, child. I'm, he 46, she 20. I'm like, damn. That's crazy. Most definitely. Uh, y'all spam us up in the comments. Y'all let us know y'all thoughts, man. That's wild, though. The whole situation wild, man. But as always... I do go with the name to get it. See ya, Nicole. Yeah. Go and get it. Ain't no time to kick it. Got a stack of flip for my folks. Dollar, 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 dollar. Please tell me you can hear me. Don't turn your back and don't declare me. Just let me know if you need me. Dollar, 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 dollar. Let me watch out for my promise. Keep my money long. Get my team strong. Let me run away from my promise.